A lot of people don't think about culverts, but you spend a day with me and that's all you're going to think about. And that's because we find culverts that have been installed in the past 30 to 40 years, and even more recently, have been undersized, not taking the stream into mind, and they actually create a series of essentially miniature dams that prevent fish from freely moving throughout a system. A really unique thing about the trout streams in this part of the state is we have really high quality habitat present. So it's not so much a problem of Trout Unlimited needing to restore habitat for trout and other cold water species, it's a fact of making sure that these trout streams are accessible. We have protected lands with mature forest, with continuous coverage, with pools and riffles that trout need to have, you know, the healthy habitat they need to persist and thrive. My family's originally from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, so coming here is like almost a homecoming. It's very similar to some of the areas I was stomping around and camping in with my grandparents as a kid. So it's, it's really cool on that aspect, but becoming more of an angler in my adult life and really enjoying this work, being able to come out to a river um, and catch you know, a native brook trout or wild brown trout and then look up a stream at a crossing that you know, we've helped a community or worked with the Forest Service to replace, that just doubles that victory where it's just, it's such a cool thing to do and that this experience is gonna be there and that you know, we're leading this charge to, to make meaningful differences for those of us who recreate in these places, but also for the people that call them home. Five years ago when I started the position as a highway commissioner, I learned about the crossing on Lily River that it was, it was uh, failing. The Lily River has kind of been a pilot project in a lot of different phases for us in Wisconsin. And I don't always like using the word pilot project, but it's really been our test case because it's a high quality trout stream that has a very bad road stream crossing on it that creates a major aquatic organism passage barrier. And a site like that, it was pretty clear, you know, you look at the water going out those outlets and it's like a fire hose going through there. So that's necking down all that water from the river, forcing it through the culverts. And then you start to ask the highway department questions like, well, how often does this overtop? Or, you know, how many times do you have to go out and maintain the site? And then you start to get more of the story in terms of they're spending a lot of time and money fixing it because it's overtopping so routinely. Being a trout stream, we knew from the DNR, from the previous commissioner, that we could not put just regular culverts back in. So it was gonna be some type of a bridge structure, some other structure than what was there. So we knew that there was gonna be a budget problem down there. And it's unique for us because it's not near the forest boundary. It's in Forest County, and the cost of the project to actually replace this crossing with a fish passage friendly a design would cost twice their annual road budget. With the county not having the money to, to do that project right away, basically what we did was monitor it. We're able to come in and provide resources to this community. There's no engineers, no hydrologists, no grant writers on staff. So Trout Unlimited is able to come in and work with our, our partners at the County Highway Commission to look at this crossing, propose alternatives, collect the data to show what those alternatives could actually be, and get those designs in place so that we could pursue funding. We talk about the infrastructure bill that was recently passed that, well, let's try to get some of this funding on the ground. So we reached out to Wisconsin Emergency Management that administers FEMA funding and looked at some programs from them. And while we didn't get funding right away, the project really caught traction and caught the attention of um, some state officials that really liked what this project was, showing an investment in a rural community and showing a real infrastructure investment that would also benefit the environment. The Fish and Wildlife Service as well as the Forest Service had gotten some money from the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, GLERI to conduct pre and post assessment, especially for brook trout on some projects that Gleary has funded. And in doing so, I know we've partnered with Trout Unlimited because of their experience already in doing pre and post monitoring within the Great Lakes. The end game is getting something out there that works better for the stream and the road. And once you get a few of these successful cost share piloted projects, when you do more outreach to say, hey, this is what we're looking at. Here's some tweaks that can sometimes make a significant difference or on the big expensive ones, let's work together and find cost share, bring in partnerships. 
In a perfect scenario, I kind of I see I see two ways that this program could really do some awesome growth over the next several years. One is look at real watershed planning. We've built some really cool momentum with our partners, including townships and other local governments, to update existing inventories and complete inventories on crossings that have never been looked at before to see where are our issues. And then we can prioritize individual watersheds that have an overlap of high quality habitat today, expected climate resiliency moving forward, but also a series of problems resulting from undersized road stream crossings that we can then pursue some funding that we could tackle all this at once rather than planning for 15 years of projects. Let's do it in five and look at a big infrastructure proposal. The Shawamigan Nicolay, they are probably our key partner in Northeast Wisconsin. And that's because, I mean, they're a major landowner in the area, but they also have decades of experience using these stream restoration techniques to put in aquatic organism passage friendly crossings. It's called stream simulation design and it's a, it's a process the Forest Service created about 20 to 30 years ago to look at a stream and put in a crossing that's going to promote fish passage. And that's really great for us to have a partner that's so well versed in it because we can use them as a resource to learn and improve our own methods internally. The, the task of replacing culverts in our in, in our partnership with Trout Unlimited has become even more urgent in light of climate change because a lot of the problem culverts, the barriers to fish are really in the headwaters currently. You know, we've, in the past, we've, we've ticked off some of the larger, most egregious, you know, crossings. And really now we're focusing on the headwaters, but I would say there's a whole lot more work to do and the work is incredibly important still because especially for, for summer refuge, when, when temperatures get really warm, those trout move closer into the headwaters, closer to the spring ponds, closer to the groundwater sources, you know, where they're gonna, going to hold through the, the, the warmest weeks of the summer. Our partnership with the Shawamigan Nicolay has had a ton of impact, replacing road stream crossings and opening habitat, improving flood resiliency, but that's, that's limited to those projects that we can do together. And the reason we partner is that we're able to do more as partners than we would be separately. If we have a healthy brook trout system that we get with uh, fish passage, then we've got healthy habitats healthy, clean water, um, which is good for our communities. And in addition, we increase the possibilities for communities to go out and recreate so they can fish more, they can kayak. So it's not just solely about the fish, but it's about improving the quality of life for the communities that surround these projects. This is what we can do when we work together, making those connections. And if we can continue investing in that, there's a lot of momentum we can carry forward and really build on these victories and I think build a model for how this work can overlap between a federal agency boundary and their neighboring municipalities.